Well, good morning again, family of God. It's so good to be together again on this Sunday morning. Can we open the service in a word of prayer at this time? Father, we thank you this morning that we could come together because this is the day that you have made and we will rejoice and we will be glad in it. We thank you, O oh God, that we have the breath of life and with the breath of life, we're going to worship you and praise you in a moment. We thank you that we are going to sit down at your feet and receive the word of God from our man of God this morning. We thank you, O oh God, that as we worship you with our tithes and offerings, you're going to be glorified. And so we thank you for an awesome time in your presence and an awesome service together. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Well, family, let's worship God together with the NCF worship team at this time. God bless you.
atmosphere is changing now for the spirit of the Lord is here the evidence is all around that the spirit of the Lord is here the atmosphere is changing now for the spirit of the Lord is here the evidence is all around that the spirit of the Lord is here overflow in this place Fill our hearts with your love, your love surrounds us. You're the reason we came to encounter your love, your love surrounds us.
Well, good morning again, family and friends to the NCF family. God bless you to all our visitors. A special welcome to you on behalf of our pastors, Drs. Basil and Anne Trine. Thank you for connecting with us this morning. We don't take it for granted. We'd love to hear from you um, this morning on the chat. And if you are connected with us on Facebook or YouTube, please engage with us on the live chat. Greet us. Let us know where you're from. If this is your first time connecting with us, who you are, where you're from. Let us also know if you're connecting with us from outside of our country. We always count it an honor and privilege to just be a blessing to the families across the earth. Each week, our pastor puts together a special video to just build your faith and empower you. And right now, I'm going to hand you over to our media team. who are going to play that video clip, and I'll see you in a moment. Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. We must receive the end of our faith. I mean, just think about this. There's a storm at sea. Jesus comes to them walking on the water, walking on the storm, and they receive him into the boat. And as they receive him into the boat, immediately the boat and the disciples are at the end of the journey, at the other side. So this is a powerful, powerful miracle, but it is speaking about us receiving Jesus Christ into our lives. And when we receive Jesus Christ into our lives, our lives is the boat. Immediately, we are on the other side. Dear family, Jesus, is on the other side. And our boats, if they have Jesus on the inside, are on the other side. And we now live by faith. For the Bible teaches us that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith on the other side. We don't live in the middle of the storm. We don't live in the middle of COVID-19. We live on the other side in COVID-19 by faith and not by sight. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Well, bless God, family. That clip will be available tomorrow on all our pastors' social media platforms. You can download it and share it, whether it's on Facebook, on Twitter, Instagram, or YouTube. And we encourage you to follow our pastor on his social media platforms as well. His handle is on the screen right now, and you can follow him just to um, be blessed every day. He posts something encouraging, posts something to build your faith, posts something to be a blessing to you. And so please do follow. Also follow just to keep up to date with what is going on in our pastor's ministry, what is going on in our church, um, what we're involved with. And uh, you will see that on those platforms. Now, me, we meet like this every week on a weekly basis. We have three uh, services for the whole family each week. On a Sunday morning, we meet like this at 8.30 a.m. On a Sunday evening, we meet again at 6 p.m. And then on a Wednesday, we have a midweek Bible teaching at 7 p.m. with our pastor. Then for the young people, we have a special youth meeting on a Friday night at 7 p.m. with the NCF Trailblazers. And then for the little children, 
the NC of King's Kids meets every Saturday afternoon at 3 p.m. for a wonderful time together with the children. So make sure you connect um, with us together with your families on Sunday and Wednesday, but make sure your young people connect on a Friday evening and on a Saturday with all the King's Kids. Now, we're going to receive the offering at this time, and just before we do that, on behalf of our pastors, we would like to thank each one for your faithful contributions to the church in your tithes and offerings, faithful contributions to our projects that we have had throughout this lockdown period. We will not be able to do what we do without your faithfulness and your commitment towards the work of God and towards our Lord Jesus Christ. And so on behalf of our pastors, thank you so much. Be assured that every person who contributes, we are praying for you. We are praying the blessing of God, the favor of God, the increase of God, the protection of God over you, over your family, over your businesses. And so thank you so much. It's my privilege now to hand you over to one of our leaders who are going to receive the offering this morning. And as you give this morning, the banking details will be on the screen where you can do your transfer and you can sow your seed to the work of God. God bless you as you give. So my scripture this morning is found in Malachi chapter 3 verse 10. My topic today is really about capacity. And as dad begins to minister more to us about capacity and faith and how to increase this capacity, um, as we go back to various scriptures, we start to look at it and certain things start to jump out. Uh, and this morning, church, we're talking about tithes and offerings, so I'm not steering away on another, another topic. But Malachi chapter 3 verse 10 says, Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that they might be meat in mine house, and prove me now herein. Herewith, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, and the last part of it says that there shall not be room enough for you to receive it. Dad's been ministering to us on capacity in the last few months, and he mentioned something, a statement, and he said, it's in terms of receiving, how big is your cup? Huh? In terms of it, some people might have, as he said, the English one, the little one, then the cumber, and then he spoke about the big bowl and so forth. But Malachi 3 verse 10 says that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Meaning, in my understanding of it, is that church, as we partake of tithes and offerings this morning, Malachi chapter 3 is loaded for you and I. Very loaded in terms of it. And I never saw it this way, that God is saying that when you, church, bring your tithe into your storehouse, which is our man of God, as we understand, he's going to open up a blessing for us. And we know, church, it's not about money. Dad tells us it's more about the blessing. But, you know, Dad's book, his first book he wrote was Tithing, the Gateway to a Life of Abundance. And as I start to to reflect and do retrospection on my life, I'm very, very interested in the tithe because I know there's many people out in the world that are doing offerings and so forth. They're not involved in the kingdom of God. They're not in this glorious light. They're not doing it for Jesus. But they are ex experiencing and sowing into the principles that are getting them this wealth. But I say, church, and I look at it, if you know the tither this morning, you're on shaky ground. In terms of it. So if you want to, dad made, made many statements along the years and he says, don't put the cart before the horse. Don't throw the baby out of the bathwater. Meaning you, you, you might look around and you look at many people that are prospering in the house of God and, and you see so many things that are happening. But church, it, it has to start somewhere. You have to start from A before you get to Z. So in terms of this whole thing about tithes and offerings is that God tells us, and I'm not saying it to your church, it's there. You go and read it in Malachi chapter 3 verse 10. Isn't it interesting that why would God even say in that verse that he, the Lord of hosts, so he's getting very serious when it comes to this area of tithes. He wants to war on your behalf eh, in terms of it. So don't take this area of tithes lightly, church. It's, it's something that's sacred. It's very serious. And isn't it interesting that our man of God has chose to release, and I think it could be his first book, but even if it's not the first book, church, tithing the gateway. So when he speaks about a gateway, it, it, there's a vula gila masanga. It's the, the, the gates. Oh, I'm even talking Zulu now, Dad. It's coming. Hallelujah. I'm not talking in tongues, church. So, church, 
isn't it interesting, how many times have we read Malachi chapter 3 verse 10, and sometimes we might just think of it, and you're taking it very lightly. It's because it's something that many people will come and minister on this topic. But for me, it's so precious that I always find myself going back to this very scripture. And Dad, I love it because the more revelation you release to us, as we go back to the scriptures that we love and we desire, it has so much meaning. There's more revelation that's jumping out of it in terms of it. So church, know that this is the start. This is the gateway. If you're not involved in the area of tithes and offerings, I appeal to you. God says there's life and there's death in terms of it. It's better to choose life in terms of it. So in his scripture, he's saying that if you want to begin and embark on this journey of success and really wanting to enjoy the fruitfulness and the, the, the many mysteries that God has God for us, don't put the cart before the horse. Start where you are at church because this is the key to unlock the door. Amen. In darkness, we shine bright, reflecting your splendor. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I receive the tithes and the offerings, and they represent your people's faithfulness and their commitment to seek first the kingdom of God and God's righteousness. You have promised if we do that, all the other things that the Gentiles seek first 
will be added unto them. And therefore, Lord, I return thanks and release the blessing of God according to the order of Melchizedek, that the Lord multiply you and the Lord increase you and the Lord supernaturally provide for you. We pray these mercies in Jesus Christ's wonderful name. Amen. Well, we're going to receive the word of God at this time. It is my privilege to hand you over to our pastor, Dr. Basil Trine. But before we do that, please get your notepad, get your pen, get your Bible, get your electronic device, and let us do our faith declaration together at this time. I receive the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. My eyes are enlightened, and I know the hope of God's calling on my life. I also know how rich is God's inheritance in me. Therefore, I know how valuable I am to God. I know the exceeding greatness of God's power, as I totally identify with Jesus Christ's death, burial, resurrection, and ascension. I've been made alive together with Christ, raised up together with Christ, and seated together with Christ in heavenly places. Today I'm filled with the knowledge of His will, in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. I'm strengthened with might by His Spirit. Jesus Christ lives big in me. I'm rooted and grounded in God's love. I'm filled with all the fullness of God. God's power and love work in me, exceeding abundantly above all I've prayed for and dreamed about. I'm very prosperous in every area of my life. Therefore, I declare that my whole life, all that I am, all that I do, and all that I own brings glory to my Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, I'm blessed and filled with the life of God. Everything I do prospers, and I'm increasing in every area of my life. Amen. Good morning and a warm welcome to the services this morning and tonight. Moen and I send our fondest love and greetings to every one of you. We will review uh, our public gatherings at the end of this month in another week or two, and we will come back to you. We are trusting God to be able to get back to have our services together, even if it is in a new or under a new norm. But we are missing you all so much. And we just long to see your faces and to worship God together. I don't know how we can worship God with masks on, but nevertheless, it is a new norm and we can do all things through Christ which strengthens us. Well, this morning we're going to continue on what the disciples encountered last week when Jesus came walking on the water in the middle of a storm. It was after Jesus had fed 5,000 men and it was more than 5,000 because if their families were there, it could be anything over tw ten to 15,000. And with five loaves, a boy's lunch. And they saw the multiplication of the loaves, a, a, a tremendous miracle of multiplication. And that shows us that Jesus Christ wants to multiply our resources for sowing. And then they wanted to take Jesus and make him king. And he went into the mountain to pray. And then he, the, he had sent his disciples to go over onto the other side. The ship was in the midst of the sea and there was a storm. And he came to them walking on the storm, walking on the water, walking on the waves. John records it. He says, immediately Jesus said, be, be, don't be afraid, it is I. And the Bible says when they received him into the boat, then immediately the boat was on the other side. We shared a bit with you uh, last Sunday morning. If you haven't watched that, you can watch it again on YouTube or on Facebook. This morning I want to talk to you on the question they asked Jesus because they had seen the loaves multiplied. They recognized that this is 
a work of God. They had seen him walk now on water. They had seen him make a journey in the middle of the sea, in the middle of a storm, that he can override that storm and the boat could experience a miracle with the disciples on getting onto the other side immediately. These are such tremendous miracles that need us to just slow down and meditate and see the pictures here of what actually was happening. So they asked Jesus, and I want to read that to you and talk to you a little from the heart of God. They asked Jesus, what must we do to do the works of God? So they saw Jesus do the works of God. Everything that Jesus taught, he actually lived it. And then they watched him pray, and then they said, teach us to pray. They watched him do the works of God. Then they asked, what must we do to do the works of God? So Jesus Christ is our prototype, our example. So I want to read John 6, verse 28 and verse 29. And we're talking to you about working the works of God and particularly believing believing very powerful John 6 28 then said they unto him what shall we do that we might work the works of God Jesus answered and said unto them this is the work of God that you believe on him whom he had sent believe on Jesus believe on him, the, the God, the works of God. God sent Jesus to do the works of God. Believing on Jesus is doing the works of God. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for the Holy Spirit that is a great teacher, illuminator and revelator of the word of God. I pray you will teach through me, with me, and that you'll help your people to mix faith with their hearing that the word of God would profit everyone. We pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen. I've come to realize that most Christians, let alone unbelievers, don't know the difference between belief or believing and faith. And I want to share that with you because that is what Jesus said. Believe. Believe. This is the works of God. You believe on Jesus. And we need to know what is the difference between to believe and to exercise faith. Let me begin by sharing a personal testimony with you this morning. Approximately 44 to 45 years ago, I was an alcoholic and a drug addict, and I was suicidal. And uh, Anne, Ma Anne was very instrumental in arranging people to come to speak to me. Instrumental in me coming to know the Lord Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. So she got my brother-in-law, who was a Czechoslovakian uh, by, by nationality, who married my, my sister. They now live in Czechoslovakia. So he came home, and in my dining room, we sat on a dining room table, and he opened up the Bible, and he let me read John 3.16. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He asked me to read that. I read it. Then he asked me, do you understand that? I said, no. He said, let us pray. 
And he prayed that God will open my understanding, that I would be able to receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. I read it again, and it seemed like the scriptures leapt out of the pages of the Bible, and I understood that God loved me so much that he sent his only begotten son for me to believe on him. He asked me, do you understand it? I said, yes. He said, are you prepared to receive Jesus and believe in Jesus? I said, yes, I am prepared to believe that he died for my sins and was raised again on the third day for, for my sins to be blotted out so I can be forgiven and I could be made innocent. He led me in the simple prayer to open up my heart and receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Well, I was born again, and the rest is history. And God has kept me over 44 years. And so, very interesting. Nobody had taught me anything. I'd never been exposed to saved people, and, and know the doctrines. I, I simply believed the word of God. We are more privileged today because we have teachings on faith. And we will still teach on faith. It's very powerful to understand the faith of God. That the faith of God is a spiritual force. And the faith of God it works like a seed. The faith of God also works like a servant. And the faith of God is also a spiritual law. And so there are, there are many, many explanations in the Bible to help us to understand what the faith of God is and how the faith of God actually works. But it is the faith of God. It is faith that accomplishes great things. God gives us that faith, and that faith resides in the Word of God. But believing, to believe, is our responsibility. I believed, and I got saved. So many people don't fully understand that there is a difference between believing and the operation of the faith of God. The Apostle Paul said in Romans 1, 16 and verse 17, he said, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. Then he says, For therein, in this gospel, is the righteousness of God revealed from faith now, no more from believing, from faith to faith, leading you to a life of faith. That's what it is mean, means, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. And so, you see here in this verse of Scripture, first of all, the Word of God is preached to us. Then we believe with our hearts, and that is how we receive the Word of God. We actually conceive the Word of God by believing the Word of God. As we believe the Word of God, the faith of God now, which resides in the Word of God, works on our spirit and causes us to be born again. I want you to repeat that. I don't want that to go over your head. Somebody preaches the Word of God. You believe the Word of God. That's your responsibility to believe. When you believe the Word of God, then you're actually mixing faith with your hearing. Then faith can work you, with your belief. Then the door gets opened into the realm of the Spirit, 
where the faith of God operates in your heart through your believing with your heart and the faith of God, the most powerful force in the universe, causes your human spirit, which has the nature of Satan, to be born again the righteousness of God. The faith of God causes that. But the faith of God works with your believing. And that is so powerful for you to understand. The faith of God manifests the glory of the word of God manifested also for a believer. When we believe the word of God, then we live by the word or we do the word of God. Very important. When you believe the word of God, then you live by the word of God. Then you do the word of God. According to the Bible, a believer is a doer of the word of God. I'm going to make a statement here now. It'll shock you. If you don't do the word, you don't believe the word of God. If you don't do the word of God, you have not yet believed the word of God. Under all we say and do lies what we believe. If you want your life changed, you must change your beliefs. Everything you experience in your life is somehow linked to what you believe. If you are poor and live in insufficiency, then you have beliefs of insufficiency in your heart. If you are sick and continually living in sickness and cannot be healed, even though you're a Christian, you don't experience healing, then you're going to have to go below what you think and say and examine what you believe, what you believe. And so if you're an angry person, forever getting angry, then you've got angry beliefs. If you raise your voice every time you're upset, then you must know there are certain beliefs like you think if you raise your voice, your point will be heard more. That can be a belief in your heart. And it's a wrong belief. So, dear friends, your beliefs are absolutely important because your beliefs determine the outcome of your life. Where did you get your beliefs from? You got your beliefs from your parenting, you got your beliefs from your life experience, and you got your beliefs from your environment that you grew up in. And so when you get saved, God gives you a new heart, a brand new heart. God quickens your spirit and he causes you to be born again. You get a brand new spirit. And then God also puts his spirit within you. And then God causes you to walk in his statutes. Let me read it in Ezekiel 36 verse 26. Ezekiel 36 verse 26. A new heart also will I give you. And a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh. And I will give you an heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and you shall keep my judgments and do them. So you see, friends, when you believe from your heart, in fact, the Bible doesn't say you believe from your spirit. It says you believe from your heart. But when you believe the word of God, God gives you a brand new heart. It is not the physical organ. The heart is your internal core of your spirit and soul. 
I call it the garden of Eden, is your heart. Now, even though you have a new heart, a pure heart when you're born again, you just know that you know in your heart that you are saved. However, it is our responsibility to guard our hearts. Because even though you have a new heart, you can still allow wrong beliefs to be planted in your heart. Now, how does something get into your heart? It gets into your heart by you continually thinking about it. That's why the battleground of Christianity is in the mind. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, you know, pulling down strongholds, casting down strongholds, casting down uh, imaginations, and, and every hard thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of God. So now you cannot stop thoughts from coming through your mind, but you have the power of choice because you know the consequences of negative thoughts not to entertain them and let them go because they'll come through and let them go unless you choose to continually think about these thoughts if you continually think about thoughts that are contrary to the word of god that are negative then a stronghold gets built in your mind, you have imaginations, your perceptions are shaped in your mind, but then as you continually think like that, those thoughts get sown into your heart, and then they become a belief in your heart. And Jesus said it like this, every tree that my father has not planted will be uprooted. So I really believe that he's speaking about wrong beliefs, beliefs that are contrary to the kingdom, beliefs that are contrary to living a life of superabundance, living a life of righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Ghost, living a life of total life prosperity. And so there must be an uprooting of the other old beliefs and a planting because the heart works like the field it will grow whatever is planted in there and so in proverbs chapter 4 and verse 20 the bible teaches us that we must guard our hearts and i want to read it to you you guard your hearts proverbs 4 20 my son attend to my words and you see you give the word of God attention now because you understand that from the word of God is going to come a belief system within you, in your heart. You incline your ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thy heart. Then he says, for they are life unto all those that find them and health to all thy flesh. And there's a powerful instruction. Keep thy heart, guard thy heart with all diligence, for out of your heart flow the issues of life. For out of it are the issues of life. Everything about your life is being shaped by what you allowed to go into your heart. And so we are custodians of our heart. In Hebrews chapter 4, speaking about the children of God in the wilderness, uh, the word of God did not profit them. So they wandered in the wilderness, land of just enough, they couldn't go into abundance. They wandered there for 40 years, an old generation perished, and a new generation uh, took. Uh, them into the land flowing with milk and honey and Paul says let us therefore fear lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest any of you should seem to come short of it you see God doesn't want you to come short of the promises of God then he says for unto us was a gospel preached as well as unto them but the word 
did the word preached did not profit them not being mixed with faith in them that heard it then he tells us in verse 3 for we which have believed do enter into his rest you see your belief the faith did not wasn't able to work because they didn't believe but we which have believed do enter into rest as he said as i've sworn in my wrath if they shall enter into my rest even though the works were finished from the foundation of the world think about this the works of god were finished from the foundation of the world but they could not enter into the rest of a finished work because they did not believe this is what is meant in the scriptures that when a word is preached to us we mix faith with our hearing how do we do that by believing the word of god when we believe the word of god we receive the word of god we conceive the word of god into our hearts that is how we say amen to the promises of god in our hearts it's very important when the word of god is being preached to you for you to believe the word of god hallelujah and the way you believe you're going to say amen from your heart there's going to come an amen in your heart in second corinthians 1 and verse 18 to verse 20 but as god is true our word towards you was not yea and nay was not yes and no the word of god that we preach is not yes and no for the son of god jesus christ which who was preached among you by us even by me and Silvanus and Timotheus was not yea and nay but in him was yea so the word of God is not no to you and when the word of God comes to you in Christ Jesus it is always yes for you then verse 20 very powerful for all the promises of God in him in Christ are yes and in him amen unto the glory of god by us now we often think that that means it's yes and amen by god no it's yes by god but it's amen by you when you believe it the tpt translation says for all the promises find their yes of fulfillment in christ so christ has fulfilled the promises of god and as his yes and our our amen our amen ascend to god we bring him glory when we say yes when when we understand that god's promises are yes in christ our yes our amen our belief says amen and that brings glory to god the the amplified puts it like this but as many as are the promises of god they all find their yes their answer in him christ for this reason we also we also utter the amen so be it to God through him in the person and by his agency to the glory of God. Too many Christians do not know the difference between believing and faith and therefore are unskilled in the word of righteousness. So as I draw this to a close this morning, Jesus said to those that asked him, what must we do to do the works of God? What must we do to work the works of God? Jesus said, this is the work of God. Believe. Believe on him that he had sent. 
Jesus taught on believing. And he, in Mark 9, 23, an amazing statement. Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believes. Now just think of the magnitude of that promise. This man had a son that was demon-possessed. And this demon would throw him into the fire and into the water. And, and Jesus said, do you believe that I can do it? He said, I believe, help thou my unbelief. Jesus made the statement, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believes. The magnitude, just think about it. Sometimes we read too quickly and we don't meditate. All things. What does that cover? Does it cover anything that you need in your life? Does it cover anything that you want in your life? This is Jesus is talking here. He says all things are possible to him that believes. How important is your believing? Very, very, very important. Then Mark 11, 24, after Jesus taught about the faith of God, he says, therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire, again, all things, now what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. Believe that you shall receive. He doesn't say have faith in them. He says believe that you receive them and you shall have them. So the subject of believing in Jesus. There is the faith of God which is a most powerful force that resides in the word of God. Jesus Christ is the spoken word of God. He's the word of God manifested. And that was God speaking to us for our lives, that as he is, so are we. Now, when we, the word of God about the death, burial, resurrection of Jesus, his incarnation, his resurrection and ascension is preached to us. We have a choice in our hearts whether to believe it or not. As you believe, you will experience the faith of God being released, the faith of Jesus, to bring it to pass in your life. I close with the scripture, lots of scriptures this morning. Hebrews 11 and verse 6. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Now when God says all things are possible to him that believes. But when God says something is impossible, then it's impossible. So without faith now, faith. Faith is not believing. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. That's why when you believe and your heart says, Amen, you please God. Because you're believing the word of God. Without faith. Now when you believe, faith kicks in. Which is in the word of God, which will bring that word to pass. But it won't kick in till you believe it. Can you understand what I'm saying? Then it says, how will this faith kick in? For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. You see, you've got to believe that God is who he says he will be, who he says he is, who he says he will do. God is not a man that he should lie. You believe the word of God is the highest level of authority in your life. He that cometh to him must believe that he is God. And then the second thing, when you come to God, you must believe that he's a rewarder 
of them that diligently seek Him. Your beliefs must be ones of reward from the Word of God. Now, when you believe He is, you believe in the isness of God, you believe that God rewards us, He rewards our beliefs, we mix faith with our hearing, and then the faith of God, which is a servant of God and the believer, will bring all that to pass in your life. I believe with all my heart the Word of God has been rich in understanding. I close with the statement, Faith is a noun. Believe is a verb. A noun is the name of a person, place, or thing. A verb is a doing word. The faith is a faith of God. The faith is a faith of Jesus. It's a force that created the universe. Believing is what you do from your heart when you receive the word of God and believe that the word of God is truth. It's the highest form of reality. You believe God will never tell a lie. I know you've been blessed. Allow me to pray for you today. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I thank you today for all our online viewers. I give you the praise, the honor, and the glory, Lord. I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, that in all our getting we get understanding, that we all will become skilled in the word of righteousness, that, Lord, we will be able to understand that we exercise our choice to attend to the word of God, to incline our ears unto the sayings of God, and to conceive them or keep them in the midst of our heart, for we believe that they are life unto those that find them, and we believe that they are health, they are medicine to all our flesh, and we dedicate our lives to God, our hearts with all diligence, because our hearts are the gardens where the issues of life grow out of. We give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. We pray in Jesus' name, amen and amen. If you've been watching this program and you would like to give your life to Jesus, my friend, then all it's going to take is for you to receive Jesus. You receive Jesus by believing. What do you believe? You believe he died for your sins. You believe he was raised again on the third day. And you believe that you received Jesus and you are saved. So say this prayer after me. Say, Dear Lord Jesus Christ, I believe you died for my sins. I believe you rose again on the third day. I confess you with my mouth as my Lord and my Savior. Come into my heart. Be the Lord of my life. In Jesus' name. Congratulations. If you said that prayer, you're born again. There are names that are coming up on the screen. Make sure you take a picture and you phone one of our pastors and they will pray for you. Welcome to the family of God. Church, I'll see you tonight at 6 o'clock as we continue to teach you the difference between believing and faith. It's vital. Don't miss that service. God richly bless you. Have a great day with your family. Bye-bye.